Hey, Kenny Jang here. I wanted to share a topic of an email that a friend sent to me this week. Um, it was a link to a website, Tom Rainer's blog. Uh, Tom Rainer typically has tremendous, uh, fantastic content. I, I really highly suggest visiting his blog. And one of the articles that the link was referring to is eight things your church website must have. That's the name of the article. Eight things your church website must have. A friend asked me for my advice. What, what was my position on it? I reviewed the list. It looks great except for I think he's missing two absolutely critical things that supersede anything that he's put on this list. But before I get to those two things, let me just review his list. Um, it's great stuff. One is staff names and titles. Second one is information about your church, children's ministry and youth ministry. Families want to know, right? Um, third is sermon archives. People come for your teaching and preaching. You need to give them a taste of that. Fourth is church calendar. Fifth is contact information. You'll be surprised how many church websites don't provide uh, basic information, contact information, phone numbers, directions, etc. Sixth is statement of beliefs. People actually do look at that stuff. Seven is links to your social media profiles. And eight is major church news items. So I love those things, but there are two things that are hypercritical that supersede these things that actually should be elevated much more um, important than these eight. And that's, um, first of all, one is you need to think about uh, classic content marketing strategy of you're investing so much time and energy and maybe paid ad budget to get people to come to your site. And you don't want them to just walk away and never have a chance to bring them back. Um, you're gonna have just, you know, walk through traffic and it's wasted. So you need to consider offering what we call a lead magnet, some sort of digital download. Um, it might be a video, an audio, a PDF, something of value to the visitor from their perspective in exchange for their name and address so that you can email them and nurture that conversation, right? Your website is your front door. You're welcome at to the church today. And what you want to do is help them cross the threshold from the website into your church building with a visit. And the way to best do that is nurture them through email with a conversation. However, you can't do that if you don't have their name and email address and, and permission to do so. So um, I'll give you one quick example that I set up at Liquid Church, which was we looked at the data analytics in our video sermon archive and came up with the top 10 most popular sermons, right? The top 10 most popular watched and downloaded sermons from our video archive. And I simply wrote a sequence, about 12, 13 emails, I believe, uh, introducing one new sermon each time and then giving a little bit more background, asking questions, getting, trying to get people to reply and have that conversation with me. It was automated so that once people sign up for that, then they get that whole sequence and over time they have a conversation um, through email. That list has been very successful, has scaled to several hundred people within a couple of months. Um, it's now crossing a thousand, I believe, and, and it's simple. We don't promote it. It's, it's a link at the navigation bar on our church online site, and it really works. Um, we've had so many replies of people saying, hey, this is great. I love getting the, the core DNA of your church, getting a sense of your culture, your teaching and preaching, etc. It engages people in conversation and really uh, demystifies the church experience for them. Second is, I think you need to install a Facebook Universal Pixel. Now, if you don't know what that is, um, you don't even need to be on Facebook with your church actively, and you don't need to be an advertiser on Facebook, but this free uh, feature allows you to install a little snippet of code on your site, on all your pages, and then what happens is, as people come to your website, it tracks and starts to build um, a whole profile of who your website visitors are. The, de the demographics, the analytics that you get from Facebook Insights is much richer in many ways than Google Analytics and other packages out there. Just because Facebook has everybody out there on their platform, they've got so much rich data about behavioral and other aspects of their demographic profile. So um, that's the first thing you want to know and look at and see who's coming to your website. Are, is it young people, old people, women, men? Uh, what type of interests that they might have, et cetera, et cetera. How long are they spending on your site? What times of day they're on your site? All that kind of stuff. And, and it drills down even further. It's very interesting stuff. Facebook Insights is a, a feature of the free Facebook Universal Pixel. The second reason for the Pixel is eventually you're going to want to use a tool that most marketplace 
uh, brands and advertisers use. It's being slowly adopted in the church and nonprofit space, but it's called remarketing or retargeting. And it's kind of like, have you ever been to a, a website and then after you leave, you start to see all these ads for that brand pop up on other websites and networks wherever you go? It's the same thing. So people come to your website, they get tagged by the Facebook pixel, and then when they come back to Facebook, you can show them ads. And you don't pay for the ads until they click. So they might see the ad once, twice, a hundred times, a thousand times. You don't pay until they click, and then you can bring them back to your website for a website visit. Hyper efficient because you only pay for performance, and second, you only pay for ads that are shown directly to people that have been to your website already. So. Facebook Universal Pixel is the second thing I'd add to your list. Uh, bump down all this other eight uh, great things, but they're not as important as a lead magnet uh, to get the name and email address of someone so you can nurture that conversation. And second is the Facebook Universal Pixel. Um, drop a comment below. Let me know if you like tips like this, and I'll continue to make more in the future if you do like them. Uh, I'm Kenny Jang. You can find me on Twitter or at my blog, kennyjang.com.